Now I'm going to work on the branch that the kingfisher stood on. So I'm going to get some mink colour and some brown. In the reference photo, the branch is quite a light wood white colour. I'm just going to do it brown or light brown. I'm just going to put a little bit of black in there. Just a few strands. And I'm going to blend them all together. So I'm just keep pulling it apart and putting it back together, separating the strands. And then I'm just going to take some of it like that. So I've got a mixture of all the colours. And I'm going to, I can just see his feet here, but I'm just going to, Go straight over his feet and then I'll draw them on, well, put them back on again using the wool after. So again, I'm going to lay it on, find my line at the side, which is there, and go under the kingfisher's body, tucking it all in as I go, because I don't want straight lines in it. So the more I tuck it in and move it about, I'm going to flip the bottom bit back up and then should I get right up underneath the kingfisher This bit quite a lot because I want it to be quite flat. So. Tucking it in, and I want just a little bit of darker brown. I'm just going to get some. I just want to, underneath the bird here, I want to just put a bit of darker brown to show the sh shadow where the kingfisher stood. So I'm just putting some darker brown on the top. Letting it just curl up doesn't really matter. But I only want it at the very top. Twisting it round, plucking it in. And then I'm going to just use a tiny bit of black right between Kingfisher's body and the branch. So just lay it on. I don't want a definite line. I've got white hair. I just want a darker area. sure I can still see the body and that I've not gone over the body and now I'm just going to keep felting if you want to felt it so that it's quite stiff you can use two needles at once just make sure you've got two of the same size and this will felt quicker so I just put them between my fingers like so and it just takes less less stabbing and they keep moving together so I just part them again and hold them there a little bit like holding chopsticks and just keep poking keep moving your hand round in different places now I'm going to turn my needles to an angle like this and 
poke them again so it's more at a 45 degree angle and this just flattens it out a bit more and I'm going to go back the other way Just gathers up more fibres and cooks it in and makes it flatter. So I'm going to go over the black and the brown bit at the top here. Really, really poke it in so it's really well felted. find that you get an achy arm when you're doing this. And now I'm going to bring my needles together. So they go together like so. One thing I haven't said is every now and again I take and it does really stick my picture up off the base. If you don't do this, sometimes it gets so stuck on. And what I use if it if I really can't get it off and I feel like it's gonna tear my fabric, I use a scalpel blade. And use scissors, I suppose, if you careful and I just really gently make sure I'm not touching the fabric just the wool and slide across it like that. as you can see when you pull it off it looks like it's all wrinkled and lumpy but I always mount my pictures on a canvas so when it's pulled tight on the canvas it pulls out any lumps and bumps and wrinkles but if you pull it anyway, it does get rid of most of them. And if you're mounting it in a picture mount, which I've got one up here. The mount would hold down the picture and get rid of any wrinkles. So you'd mount it. Obviously this mount's slightly too small. And if you had a hard surface underneath, it would get rid of any of the wrinkles. Right, I'll carry on and do his feet. So for his feet, they are mostly oranges and brown. So I'm just going to use the same orange that I used up here. It's quite a bright orange. And I'm going to think, right, where are his feet now in relation to the branch? They're going to come out there and just curve round and his other foot there's just a tiny little bit of his foot showing there so we'll put that on so pull out your wool I'm going to twist this one and then I need to find my needles there we go So I'm going to start, I want to reflect him, let's take that down. Uh, I'm going to start about here. So I know it's brown, but I'm going to do it orange and then I'll put some brown on top. So I'm going to start about, I think I've got too much wool there. Because gonna... I'm going to fold it in half, so I'm going to put half of it on with the other half at the top. And then I'll bring that over once I've anchored it in. So find the spot where I think I want it to go and anchor it in. 
find it easier if you can put one finger on one side and one finger on the other. And keep going until it's really well anchored. And I'm going to bring that bit down. And it's going to go to about there, like so. And we just want that slight curve of the foot going around the twig. Feet can be fiddly. You've just got to kind of draw what you see with the wool, paint what you see with the wool. It's just looking at the shape and trying to recreate that. Anchor that in well there. And then I'm going to bring this bit back up here. Because he has got more than one toe there, so it is quite thick. I'm going to anchor it down just a little bit there. And I'm going to put this bit over here to do the back toe. Which I'm going to need a little bit more wool to thicken it up. Just bring that in a bit. orange and I'm going to go back up here and just leave a tiny bit at the top anchor it on again and with this bit I'm just going to twiddle it round and tuck it in and I'm going to come down here again and up the way and bring it back down What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lift this bit of his, uh, I don't know what part of his body you'd call his tummy, I don't know, and just flop it over the top of where I put in the foot. And I think I'm going to leave the other foot off because it's just a blurry blob and I think if I put it on it will just look like, what's that blurry blob? So I just need a little bit of darker for the top of his foot so I'm going to use this darker brown, which is this one, this darker brown, and go over the top of his foot for the shadow, or the darker, so I don't think it's a shadow, I think it's actually part of his foot. Tuck it in, spread it about a bit, so it covers, and then for this one I'm just going to chop it off here Ooh. and tuck it all back in so that's the shadow or the darker part of his foot like so. and then he's got tiny little talons on the end so I'm going to get some black for them just a few strands I'm going to spin it together wrap this one around my finger then I can get a good point you really don't need much wool at all so anchored it in there and I'm just going to go up to the, the foot with the talon and I'm going to pick this bit off cut it 
and then poking any loose ends there. Same again for his talon at the front. Anchor it in. Sorry, my hands are not. I've gone in the wrong place since his talons are actually touching the wood, so I'm going to just pull it back off and start again. That's because I didn't look at my reference photo before I stabbed it in. Yeah. Once that's anchored in there, move it up to his toes, trim it off before I end up with a big black blob. I think this one needs to be slightly bigger, but I'll look at it in a minute. Yeah, I'll just use this bit of black that I've cut off and make this one slightly bigger and a bit more curved. just have a good look at his eye now because that's the most important part so I'm going to pull it off the back in like so and can you see I've got some blue hair there that's floating around so I'm just going to put that off I'm going to get my reference photo I'm going to put them side by side and I know it is slightly different because I don't have the exact colours that's on there. But I just check him out. I just want to, I don't know if you can see there. Let's zoom in. Sorry about that. There is a bit of the yellow showing through between his, this blue bit and the orange bit. So what I'm going to do is just lift up the blue like so to cover and then I'll just pluck it in to secure it and zoom back out And I just want to look at this bit here, it looks quite fluffy and it's not as fluffy on there so I'm just going to tuck that in and check over here, just give him all a stroke with the flat bit of my needle, make sure that all the fibres are going in the right direction and I think any stray hairs I can just lift off or snip them and just stand up and have a good look I've got another slight gap there where I can still see the background fabric so I'm going to tuck that in and just keep looking at your reference and at your picture can you see any abnormalities anything that looks a bit off or a bit odd I think that's, I think I'll call that finished. Thank you. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you would like to have a go yourselves, then details of how to purchase my kits are in the links below. I will be doing more tutorials, so please like, subscribe and feel free to share.